Nintendo released their quarterly financials, which we will go over in a video later on today. And then they also had their investors briefing where they talked with investors, presented everything to them, uh, you know, revenue, plans for this fiscal year that they are currently in, uh, in April. And then it'll, of course, go till the end of next March, so in 2019. But they also had some big announcements, with a very big announcement that the leadership at the top, uh, Tatsumi Kimishima, will be stepping down. He is the CEO, obviously, that took over in 2015 after the unfortunate passing of Mr. Iwata. He took over, and he really helped kind of bring stability to the company, obviously led the Switch's launch, and I think probably helped cement one of the best launch years we've ever seen for a system when it comes to straight up releases. I mean, you got things like Mario Odyssey, Zelda, Xenoblade, I mean, the list goes on, but I mean, look at Mario Odyssey and Zelda coming out in the same year, that's a big deal. And he was at the top, making sure everything was running on time, running according to schedule, did a great job, obviously helped the launch that, that really has turned their home market, uh, really their, well, their home console market, I should say, around. You know, big success for the Switch right now. Like I said, we'll go over the numbers later on today. But no, yes, they're big success so far with the Switch, especially with the numbers that they reported today. But, of course, Mr. Kimishima is getting a little older. He is 68 currently. So it was when he was introduced as the CEO, he was introduced as an interim CEO. He was not going to be around for long. Again, his age, he was a little older, um, so they were pretty much looking to someone who was more long-term. Of course, Mr. Kimishima was eventually looking to retire, probably around his age now, so they had to find someone else, and they did. The replacement CEO is Shintaro Furukawa, and Mr. Furukawa has been around in Nintendo for a little while. 1994 is when he started working there. Uh, mostly he's worked in finance, but also has worked with the Pokemon company as a contracting source so they could talk to him and everything. So he does have quite a bit of experience, uh, a lot of a pretty good relationship with the Pokemon company and everything. So he's worked there quite a bit. And it sounds like he is their long-term CEO. He's 46, so he's a bit younger, obviously. And uh, they like to do that with the CEO. Usually you bring... A CEO like Nintendo, they'll bring in a CEO who's a bit younger. Uh, for example, Astoro Wada was 42 when he took over. So they're looking for more long-term uh, CEOs, ones that will be at the top for a bit so that, you know, if you keep changing CEOs, plans could change internally at that time. So they're going to try to keep stability there. And it, from what Kimishima said, he was eyeing uh, Mr. Furukawa for a while. So he, he had a, a pretty good sense about him that this will be the guy going forward for their CEO position. Now, of course, most of us didn't really, don't really know who he, who he is. He was internal at Nintendo. It's not like we, we all go to work at Nintendo and we know we see him you know at work or anything and know, know about him. So a lot of people on Twitter, uh, a lot of uh, journalists in Tokyo were kind of uh, putting information out there for people, specifically his strengths, which when reading through his strengths, it sounds great, honestly, for Nintendo to have this person at the top. This, for example, is a list from Yuji Nakamura, who is a Bloomberg tech reporter in Tokyo, kind of going down some of the information about uh, the new CEO, an expert in marketing, which is something Nintendo de obviously needs, definitely needs. The Switch really benefited from very good marketing, has close ties to Pokemon, as I was saying before, uh, spent a third of his career overseas in Germany, fluent in English, which is very important, by the way, that, that's very good, played a key role in the Switch alongside a few others, and uh, of course, he's young, 46, um, and just, again, just so you know, Wada was 42 when he took over. And it does sound like he enjoys playing games quite a bit, as Takachi Machizuki made mention that Nintendo's new CEO loves to play a game, knows a lot about it, and the industry, people know him, says, asked, what's his favorite? He said, Golf Story is his recent favorite. I mean, the guy, the guy at least has taste, right? Nintendo of Europe also saw their president, Satoru Shibata, step down, and what's going to happen here is he's going to return to Japan and join the NCL board of directors. So he's not leaving the company. He's actually technically getting a bit of a promotion to a more global position here on the board of directors to help out. No replacement uh, head of Nintendo of Europe has been announced yet, so we'll have to wait for more information about that. That more or less was in kind of the packet that they sent out for uh, CEOs or, or heads or presidents of different parts of Nintendo that were stepping down. Uh, he was there. So uh, we'll wait for a replacement there, but a lot of people are curious what's going to happen now with Nintendo. You're not really going to notice a ton right away. That's the thing. Uh, Furukawa will, of course, take over, uh, but Kimishima will also be there with him more than likely, almost as like, like I said, as an advisor role. 
So you won't see a ton of change right away. It honestly would probably be a couple years before you see any real changes as games are already in development, right? Ideas behind the scenes are already happening. So he's more than likely just gonna step in, much like how when Kimishima took over in 2015, we didn't see a lot of changes until the Switch, I guess, uh, when that was really starting to t uh, speed up and happen. That was, what, a year and a half later? So it's not like we're gonna see any massive changes right away. So I would give it a year and a half, maybe even two years before you really start to see the new CEO's footprint on Nintendo. But it's it's another step here for Nintendo to become, I guess, more stable here as Kimishima obviously wasn't gonna be around forever. He was 68, so he was gonna move on um, sooner than later. So this is good. And they get a younger CEO in who, if he does a good job, could be around for the next 20 years as CEO, so uh, very, very good here. I, I like some of his credentials. I like some of his strengths with marketing. I think that's a big deal. Good ties with the Pokemon company, which they need to maintain, obviously. But uh, let me know what you guys think about this move at the top. I'm very curious. Um, I, I know some people were concerned or worried that Kimishima was stepping down because he's done such a good job over the past couple years, really, I guess, launched Nintendo back into, uh, into the spotlight with some big things after the Wii U just, just struggled heavily. But uh, let me know what you guys think down below. I, again, I think this is a good thing for Nintendo, obviously, to get someone who's younger and really move forward with someone who could be more long-term. Kimishima was always kind of a um, kind of a bridge to the next CEO. So it's good to kind of get this out there now and uh, move forward with, with someone who's gonna be more stable. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very curious. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, guys. Dislike it if not. I will see you later on today. We're gonna go over all the numbers because there's some big things to talk about there when it comes to some of the fiscal reports and everything they put out. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.